Hi, I'm Karen Nichols. Welcome to my studio, and I'm a Backstreet Gallery artist. Um, my, my signature artwork is probably my um, paper painting collage, which uh, is basically torn paper in a 3D kind of, of uh, frame. Or sometimes it's it's also uh, in a little plastic box or something. Mostly it's it's a, a bas relief kind of thing. And um, I do several different things. I do flowers, and I do people. The, the subject matter determines what kind of paper I'm going to use and how I'll make it different. Um, one of the, my favorite kinds of paper, it's a real fuzzy edge, I don't know if you can catch that as against this, this background, but the edge is very, very uh, fuzzy, so if I'm going to do an animal or a bird, this is probably the, the paper that I'm going to use. And um, so you, most of the time starts out white like this. Um, this kind of paper, would be the kind of paper I would use for her hair. Something with a little fuzz to it, but not much, and it's uh, fairly easy to tear. This is a lot harder to tear. Um, and uh, if I want a big, long strand, I mean, it takes a lot of effort to, to make a big, long strand. It's gotta be paper that will tear easily. And then as a background, I might use, this is mostly rice paper, different kinds of rice paper. Here's some with a pattern in it that I might use for a background. Um, sometimes I'll wanna put clothes on somebody and I'll have some fancier uh, paper that has some some texture to it or maybe wings on an insect or something else that, that needs to be more gossamer and uh, and then when I get ready to do a particular artwork um, I'm thinking about doing uh, a floral piece that will have different kind of flowers in something like this one that has been sold so I painted the paper first, which is this kind of paper because it's not going to be a bird or an animal or of any kind. So this paper painted um, different colors, and um, then I can go ahead and, and create from there. It's sort of like a puzzle piece. I, I create the puzzles, and then I piece it together on a, on a background and, um, and then put it in the frame. So. Uh, uh, my people, I will do like watercolor on their their faces, uh, and if I want to, to create um, uh, a uh, depth to it, I will wet the paper and then put it around, to say, my finger if I'm doing a finger, and it'll it'll create some some curvature to the the wrist or the, the face or the fingers or whatever else that I'm doing. Friend that I discovered not when I first started doing this. I have been doing this for about 40 years and I haven't seen anybody else that does this exact kind of thing that I do. So I wouldn't want to say that I that I, it's an original thing, but uh, it probably is. So so say I want to do a piece of hair, for instance, uh, for someone's hair, and I, I have to create... This is a, a water-filled um, uh, brush. So there's water in the tube and mm -hmm. then this part is a brush part, and then I have to make sure that, that it's wet, otherwise it doesn't do much good. So I can create a shape, for instance, if I wanted to do, say, a leaf. And it tears pretty easily. Shapes will tear pretty, and this paper tears pretty easily. Other paper mm -hmm. does not. And so say I wanted to do a hair, for instance, and it's a long hair. I have to I have to make sure that it stays wet, which it doesn't do really easy. You have to keep re-wetting it, and I'm not making it quite as thin as I might like to for hair. But it is difficult to tear. Okay, it's show, showing you nice and easy. But if I want to do a great big long one, half mm -hmm. the time it'll, it'll stop and it'll break and it'll tear, and I won't be able to get a a long piece. For instance, on this one now, if I wanted to do an iris, I would start with maybe a shape that's going to be on the top part of it, and I might go and I might make it wigglier just in case I wanted to make it rougher. So there's the top part of the iris.
use special glue for my art pieces. It's pH neutral is what it is. That is um, uh, uh, non-acid so that it, they should last for a long time. And, and even the ones that I did a long time ago when I didn't know all these things, uh, they're 40 years old and they still look okay. <laughs> got a desk that's big enough that I can do my work on here that I can put a wet piece of watercolor paper down and and do watercolors um, this is one of my watercolors that I've done and uh, this I can wet the whole paper and just lay it on this glass and be able to to not have it buckle while I'm painting on it and uh, so that's that's really nice group as a model and she'd be great to do with my with my torn paper but I had my watercolors there so that's what I did that particular day this is a, a watercolor portrait of my granddaughter she is now uh, 12 but I think she was about six at that time and I really enjoyed doing portraits I've done several for uh, you know have sold them um, I did several children and this is the one that I guess incited people to, to ask me what I do with one of their, of their child. This is one of my oil paintings, and it's of course our local um, uh, Cedar Lighthouse. How do you decide which medium to create today? Well, when I envision something, it, it, it tells me, you know, okay, this is gonna be an oil painting because it looks like an oil painting in my brain. And um, sometimes I'll see something. I saw a, a picture of a lady with uh, red curly hair and I wanted to do, do one and that's how I envisioned her. For me, when I want to do it fast, because you only have two and a half hours to, to mm -hmm. work, and I did these two, I just did them in, um, in one color, which makes it real easy. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. to mix it. This one, I do pencil on canvas, and that one I started doing, I have not seen anybody else that quite does that either, but I'm sure somebody must. Uh, but I've been doing that for years because it's just easy, you know, you could do that pretty, pretty, uh, with few materials. And this is my acrylics, so I do acrylics as well. Mm. And this is our local bridge. 